In a lecture hall at the University of Oxford in 1971, a young physicist named William Unruh asked his audience to consider a rather odd thought experiment. He said, consider a fish screaming underwater. And now imagine this fish tumbles over a waterfall. Suppose that if the water from the waterfall was traveling faster than the sound waves through water themselves, would any fishy friends up above the waterfall ever get to hear this scream? Or would this waterfall be a kind of sonic black hole? Now entering the facility. Now, many of you are probably familiar with basic black hole physics. You know that they are immense warpings of space-time, so massive and powerful that not even light can escape their great influence. And you could turn Jupiter into a star with a black hole. Many of you also probably know another defining feature of these objects, the event horizon. No, not the nightmarish hell engine that makes you gouge your eyes out. No, the physical place in sp we're definitely not researching that. The physical place in space at which there is a point of no return for light and matter. We almost always talk about event horizons in the context of light, but something exactly similar can happen with sound. That physicist from before, Dr. Unruh, who asked us to consider screaming fish, actually backed up his thought experiment with rigorous math just a few years after that lecture. In 1981, Dr. Unruh published a now seminal paper showing that the very same equations that might describe a screaming fish falling over a waterfall could be used to describe the behavior of a real black hole in outer space. I'm not kidding, the exact same math. Therefore, any object that might stop sound waves from propagating away from it could be deemed a sonic black hole. And sound waves moving through a fluid like this, some black hole analog, can even experience their own event horizons. And those, those you can see with your own eyes. Black holes get a bad rap. For whatever reason, maybe it's popular culture or science popularizers like me, people seem to think that BHs, uh, black holes, we're friends, I can call them that, BHs just gobble up everything everywhere indiscriminately. And while it's true that BHs are voracious eaters, they have limits, limits like gravity. For example, here's what would happen if we suddenly replaced the Earth's sun with a similar mass black hole. Are you ready? Three, two, one. You see, nothing happened. First of all, we'd still see light from the sun for about eight minutes. That's just how long it takes light to get from the sun to Earth. And second of all, because the mass of the black hole would be the same, it would have the same gravitational effect on all the planets in the solar system and on you. And everything would continue on orbiting as normal, except in a few years, all life on Earth would completely freeze over and, and die. But that, that's not BH's fault. BH is cool. I happen to think that sonic black holes are even easier to understand than their more famous cosmic counterparts. So let's walk through the basics together. Hey, Aria. What up, K-Money? That didn't feel right. Nope, it sure didn't. Aria, run the program, please. A sonic black hole can be thought of as a simple pipe with fluid moving through it like water. In less exciting situations, any perturbations in the water, like sound waves, push on the atoms and molecules and propagate through the pipe normally. But now let's suppose that in the middle of the pipe, the flow suddenly gets a lot faster. So fast, in fact, that there's now a transition point between subsonic flow and supersonic flow. In the subsonic region, below the speed of sound, waves move just fine. But in the supersonic region, the waves are slower than the medium that transmits them, by definition. And so they will never leave. A screaming fish on this side would never be heard. This is a system with an event horizon right in the middle, a point past which information cannot escape. It is a black hole that can't speak or can't talk, which is why these black holes are often called dumb holes. That really doesn't sound right. Yeah, I know. And unlike astronomical black holes, you can actually get up close and personal to a setup like this and see it for yourself. In fact, there's one of these in England right now. I need you to listen. There is something about this place he isn't telling you. The facility- Aria, are you still compiling something in here? What are you doing? You all good? All good, K-Man. 
Dang, that still sounds dumb. I'll work on it. In 2016, the University of Nottingham's Quantum Gravity Laboratory finished this, a big tub of green water draining at the center, kind of like a bathtub. In fact, this kind of flow is called bathtub vortex flow. Now, just like Dr. Unruh found that certain fluid systems can act like black holes, it just turns out that bathtub vortex flows can be a near-perfect analog for how matter falls into a black hole. So this setup is so good good, in fact, that it is currently being used to study the behavior of black holes in space. Radiant scattering, Hawking radiation, you know, awesome science stuff. You can see the special event horizon effects we've been talking about yourself, too. Look very closely now. When the scientist here makes waves away from the sonic black hole, little perturbations, they radiate out as normal. But close to the vortex, past the event horizon, those same light waves can't escape and fall into this black hole analog, just like light and matter do around cosmic black holes. It is mathematically equivalent, but it's right before our very eyes. This is an awesome experiment that took a lot of time and money and brain power and a lot of very clever scientists, but not all of us have the ability to go and see something like this for ourselves. So I have come up with a quick way that you can approximate this approximation in your own home by yourself or with your family for just a few dollars. And all you need is some soda and some duct tape. And that's it, really. Though black holes have been theorized about and indirectly observed through their effects on other stuff in the universe for decades now, we only just more or less directly imaged one about a year ago. This, the M87 black hole, 55 million light years away. Now I know it's not like anything you've ever seen in sci-fi and it's kind of fuzzy, but this is in fact an incredible feat of science and all the scientists involved should be commended because this thing was really, really hard to see. My favorite example of this is that trying to see this supermassive black hole billions of times the mass of our sun at 55 million light years away is like trying to see a fist-sized object from Earth on the moon. Yeah, humans are getting pretty good at that whole science thing. If you've ever taken a beginning science class, I'm sure you've seen one of these before. It's a simple construction, just two two liter soda bottles connected with some duct tape with some water filling the majority of one of the bottles. When I was a kid in my science class, you would use this to simulate tornado-like vortex flow. But do you know what this flow actually is technically? It's bathtub vortex flow. Yes, just like we saw in the black hole experiment. So what I'm going to do to make this a impromptu black hole simulator is just put a chopstick into this apparatus to create some ripples in the vortices as it goes down into the other bottle. And you could use any old pokey device you find around the house. Now what you're about to see did take me a few tries to get right, but just look at what I got. You have to look very closely, like in the university video, but there, right there, can you see it? Can you see the waves falling into the sonic black hole instead of moving outwards? This, believe it or not, is an excellent model of a black hole, at least in theory, maybe not in our simple setup, but it is a rigorous analogy. This is a fast, cheap, and immediately understandable demonstration that you can do by yourself or with your family and start thinking about the parallels between that simple setup with plastic bottles and cosmic black holes with their accretion disks and Hawking radiation and event horizons. In fact, the scientists in that bathtub vortex flow setup are using it to study Hawking radiation right now. You'd be creating awesome holes, not dumb ones. It still doesn't sound right. Until next time. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the facility's very nerdy faculty for directly supporting this video, especially research assistant James Fitzgibbon and visiting scholar Emily Yell. The main source of revenue for the facility is from the faculty and from the Patreon. If you want to join our Patreon and our Discord, where right now literally hundreds of nerds are talking with each other at every second of the day, giving me episode suggestions, sharing photos of their cats, 
You can join our Patreon right now by going to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill or going to the link in the description. And you can get your name on Aria if you support the facility just enough. And there's a lot of you, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna ride this one out for however long this is gonna take. Still going, so I'm just gonna, just gonna. Thanks for watching. <laughs>